I have met people smarter than Zoos and certainly more practical, more flexible, and more capable of worldly success. But I've never met anyone more creative, more humorous, more interesting, more patient, more spirited, and more profoundly benevolent than Zoos. Despite his musical publishing company being called Miss Anthrope Music, despite his dark, sarcastic, and deliberately provocative, and sometimes scatological and outright silly humor, he was a deeply humanistic and kind human being who was always a better person than any philosophical pretensions would suggest. In theory, he found people to be hypocritical, conforming jackasses. But in practice, he treated everyone he met with respect and kindness until they proved themselves worthy of neither. He didn't like to consider himself a social person, but he despised being alone and understood that people need people, all we've got is each other. Ultimately, when all is said and done, you judge a person successful or not by what they do, by the done. A creator creates, a good person does good things. By that definition of success, Zutz was eminently successful. He did the things he set out to do, mostly, although not always, on his own terms. He knew who he was and what he wanted and acted accordingly. He made mistakes in his relationships, but the most important relationships he ever had with his parents, with our son, and with me were ultimately successful. carried around with him constantly. Uh, I suppose some people thought him to be one who dwells on negative matter, difficult, stubborn, maybe even a little crazy. But I have been accused of having the same traits myself, and I'm proud to say that I never heard one actual problematic moment with Zeus. Ever. We may have had menial uh, disagreements over some of the unimportant issues from time to time. It was never an argument, not even close. We got along famously, and I was absolutely thrilled to be contributing to his musical legacy. I always tried to be there for him. If he asked me to play a certain drum part that was tough for me to navigate, I'd immediately go to work on it until he approved of my performance. Uh, John and William would testify once he requested that I wear Batman boxer shorts. <laughs> and a gig we did in San Francisco, and I had them on. And I'm, in fact, I'm wearing them right now. <laughs> and if anyone wants to see them, maybe it'll work. The school I work at is considered a magnet for performing arts, uh, technology for performing arts. And um, so most of the students are performers in some way or the other. And they hear it and they come to me, wow, how did you guys do that? Can I do that same thing on my guitar? Yeah. So again, this is this idea going on and on and on. So we are lucky to be standing in the shadow of somebody that passed on this sort of cultural juggernaut, um, culturally to us and genetically to everyone. But this rang true with a lot of how I understood him, is that he said that going to work and I'm just paraphrasing the interviews. He said, going to work is like making a deal with the devil. You, you, you go to the devil, and the devil says, well, I'll give you $10 an hour you know, to go and do this stuff for me, or I'll give you $10 an hour and, and, and uh, to work eight hours a day, and you know you take an hour to, to get ready for work, an hour to get home from work, so that's uh, uh, 10 hours a day. I'll give you $80 a, a day to come to work for me and give me all those days of your life, 10 hours a day, at least five days a week, you know, week after week, month after month, so you can continue to exist, to continue to survive, to continue to work, to give me those hours out of your life. 
And so Zuch recognized the, the ultimate absurdity of that simply surviving, simply to pay, pay bills. And he wanted more for his life, so that's why he was a creative artist. He generated all that music out, and he couldn't have done all that if he had to work in a day job. I couldn't remember Zuch's real name, but at the end of that episode, uh, we gave the reporter uh, the uh, insane white guy who thinks it's Michael Jackson. The real name of Dion Kampowski from Patterson, New Jersey. And that was my tip visit. So, uh, um, I just want to say, I don't think the word genius has been used today. Uh, I think Zeus uh, is a genius. Um, I, I listen to his music all the time. And uh, <clears throat> after he died, I went back and decided to listen to the music in uh, in, in order, and going back and listening to uh, it is on the miniature golf course, I forgot that I had gotten, um, you know the, the term earworm? You can't get a melody out of your own. I forgot about dental dance. <laughs> and it was in my head for a couple months, and I forgot it, but now I'm reminded of it again. So. Uh, that's one of the great things about Zoo is that he, in addition to amazing time signatures, hilarious lyric, uh, lyrics, uh, a totally original mind, I thought he was melodically absolutely fantastic. And I think that his melody will live, live on. And uh, I suggest that we all go, out, go back and we'll maybe part ways here and listen to uh, Richard Hassan's Solutions and John Truby and uh, Scott Colby and, of course, Zoo's record is amazing. Thank you.